Hi, welcome to Cooking with Corey. I'm your host, Chef Corey Dern, and today I am inspired by strawberries and everything strawberry. Um, for those of you who are looking at my lovely apron here, uh, you'll notice it says Foodland Ontario because I'm a proud um, media spokesperson for Foodland. And I thought, you know what my viewers want? They want to know what to do with the beautiful strawberries that are in season all spring and summer long, yum, yum, yum. What can I do aside from eating them with whipped cream or a little bit of sprinkled sugar or just straight, straight from the bowl? What can I do to make my strawberries, you know, fantastic and not rot in my fridge ideally, which I know a lot of people have a hard time with. So first and foremost, I wanna say this. If you wanna properly store your strawberries, you wanna make sure that you kinda of wanna keep the green on ideally, but rinse them, Put them in a bowl lined with paper towel and then put a damp paper towel on top and change that often and keep it in the fridge. And then your strawberries are gonna last a really nice long time if you choose to do that. Today though, there's no room for storing your strawberries in your fridge. You're gonna wanna eat these recipes because the two recipes I'm gonna show you today are one, black and rainbow trout with a strawberry salsa. Yes, you heard me, a strawberry salsa. And I'm gonna do a Thai-inspired uh, strawberry chicken salad. So first things first, let's get going with the trout. So trout is not gonna take a long time to cook. Um, actually, it's gonna cook up pretty quickly. Um, it's only gonna take about one to three minutes, but I do want the flavors that I'm going to um, season the trout with to um, kind of uh, have time to settle a bit, if that makes any sense. So first things first, whenever you're doing a recipe, you wanna make sure that you look at your recipe and you get your mise en place or all of your ingredients ready to grow, uh, go. Ready to grow and ready to go. Gosh, I love live television. Anywho, so when you have your ingredients that are grown and ready to go, you wanna separate them, get them ready so that there's no turning around or, oh, I forgot to do this or I'll have time to chop this or not. You wanna make sure that you have everything ready to rock and roll so that when you start cooking, everything is in front of you and it's quite effortless and you're not scrambling at the last minute to go, oh, I forgot this ingredient. So let me talk to you about the ingredients. In here, I've got my spice blend for my uh, lovely blackened rainbow trout. So I have some paprika, I have some uh, onion powder, some garlic powder, I've got some uh, dried oregano and dried thyme. I also have some yum, yum, yum cayenne pepper and some kosher salt. And so I'm just gonna mix these up. I can use a little spoon if I want. And what I'm gonna do is um, use from a high height. So what I like to do is I take, if I wanted to concentrate on just getting a, a part of it sprinkled and I only wanted this one little area, then I would go from low. But if I wanna get a nice reach all over, then I go a little bit higher up. And so when you wanna make sure that you're covering something and you wanna get a nice mixture of everything on it, you wanna go a little higher up because it gives you more coverage as you can see. So I've got, oh, this smells really nice. I love when uh, I'm doing a recipe and I can just smell all the ingredients. It just whets my appetite for when I'm gonna start cooking it. So I'm just gonna pat that in and pat that in. And then I'm gonna flip it over. And because I touched the fish, I don't wanna cross contaminate my seasoning. So I'm just gonna do the other side. And when I start doing this, I'm actually gonna be cooking it skin side down. So I've got my lovely, everything is all nicely patted and ready to go. And I like my fish to be um, at room temperature, like chicken, steak, anything that starts off at room temperature is a really, really, really good way to go because um, that way you're not waiting for the center to meet up with the rest of your meat, in this case fish. Uh, when it's at room temperature, you're gonna get a really nice even cook. And again, it'll just be for a quick minute uh, on each side, maybe two minutes on each side. So I don't wanna cross contaminate, so I'm gonna wipe my hands down. And this is the hand that touched the fish, not this hand. So this is the hand I'm gonna stick into a glove and just make sure that um, 
uh, when I have a chance to, in between the commercial break, go and wash my hands, I will do so. It's really important when you're working with ingredients and you can have the most incredible locally sourced, incredible Ontario products, uh, but if you don't wash your hands and you cross-contaminate, it's for naught because you're just gonna make yourself sick. So, I've got my fish going here. I can't do a strawberry salsa Oh, without strawberries. So here I've got some absolutely gorgeous, beautiful um, Ontario strawberries. They're washed and they're ready for me to start my dice. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the top off. If I were doing something a little fancier, I would do something known as hulling it, which is where I take the tip of my knife and just take the center out. But I'm really not too concerned about it. You can, it's your kitchen. If you wanna make sure that you don't have the bitter center in, you can always pull it out. I'm gonna go with about a cup of uh, strawberries here. And this recipe, by the way, is available um, at foodlandontario.ca, or you can come to my website and check it out as well. It's really, really, really great. Um, I find that um, when you make a list to go shopping, it really, really helps. And if you're doing a Foodland Ontario, one of the great things about their recipes is that when you go to your local store, um, <laughs> I really love this. If you go to your local store, they'll have a section set up and it actually will say Foodland Ontario and it'll show you what's being grown uh, and is seasonal, which I think is fantastic. So if you're ever doing a Foodland um, Ontario recipe, one of the best things that you can do is give yourself a good head start and look for the Foodland Ontario display at your local grocery store because then you can see what's in season, what's readily available and what's being produced here in uh, Ontario. How lucky are we that we have these strawberries? I'm always talking about smell -o vision and how good everything smells, et cetera, et cetera. It's true, perfectly uh, beautiful ripe strawberries, which I'm just dicing as you can see right here. They are so fragrant, as opposed to getting um, strawberries from elsewhere. They could look really beautiful, but unfortunately they just have no taste. You can't even taste the sweetness of it. And then you're doing stuff like adding sugar to you know, some water or doing a simple syrup just to bring out the sweetness. There's no need for that here. These strawberries are so fragrant, I can just smell the sweetness coming out of them. Uh, also in the strawberry salsa, I'm gonna be using other fresh Ontario ingredients like cucumber. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Who does not love cucumber? I do, and I also love um, tomatoes. Everything is in season right now. It's so beautiful. You can also visit hot houses. We're gonna go to a quick commercial break and when we come back, I'm gonna continue making my salsa. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Cooking with Corey. I'm your host, Chef Corey, and today I'm doing two beautiful recipes for Foodland Ontario. Yum, 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 everything locally sourced, because you know good things grow in Ontario, and we're gonna make something great with that. So I'm making a blackened rainbow trout with um, a strawberry, cucumber, strawberry being the key ingredient, cucumber, um, red, uh, orange, pepper, and tomato salsa to go on top. I've already got my uh, trout uh, that has a lovely um, dried spice blend on it that has paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, oregano, thyme, cayenne. It's a burst of really, really beautiful, strong flavors, a little bit of salt, and I've got my pan on. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil into the bottom of the pan. And if you want, uh, and this recipe suggests, that you can use this um, uh, oil as a base and then put some butter in your pan to add depth of flavor. Make sure that you add the butter to the oil. That will prevent the, oil, uh, the butter from burning. So if you are gonna use or like cooking with um, butter, make sure you put a little bit of oil in the pan like I have and then put your butter in and then let the butter dissolve and then you will get some beautiful, beautiful butter in your dish. So for this, I'm gonna now use uh, this handy dandy hand and I'm gonna put my trout in and I'm gonna wait till it actually makes that sound uh, because I'm gonna put it in skin side down first. Okay, I can see it's starting to make that kind of noise. So I've got the skin side down in my pan. Glove can now come off. 
Pans are now clean, and I'm now going to continue with making my lovely little salsa here. I'm going to keep the skin on the cucumber because I think it's very pretty and it adds nice color to it. But I'm just doing a nice even dice with all of my ingredients. Whoops. Um, and you want to make sure that they're nice and they kind of match the dice of the uh, strawberries that I have there. I love using farm fresh cucumber. Again, the guidelines are, the, like the recipe is a guideline. That's the best way that I could put it. Your recipe is a guideline saying, hey, I'm a chef. I made this. These flavors were really, really harmonious because I love these flavors. But maybe you don't love these flavors. And if that's the case, then that's where I'm going to encourage you, my beautiful folksy wokesies at home, to get creative and as freaky deaky as you want in your kitchen because you are your chef at home and you're the one who gets to decide what your flavor uh, profile is going to be like. So with this... I'm going to say this recipe is wonderful as is, but in case, you know, oh, that looks good. All right. And it's already seasoned. There we go. Uh, so what I was saying was uh, maybe you don't want to use orange pepper. Maybe you want to use red pepper. Then by all means, use red pepper. Use red pepper and yellow pepper. Make it as, you know, rainbow flavored as you like. I'm sorry. My goodness, that smells really, really good. It's very distracting when you're cooking and you're smelling such wonderful smells, let me tell you. So in this beautiful salsa, uh, and the uh, rainbow trout is cooking really, really beautifully. Um, and don't forget that even when you're cooking something like chicken or fish, you want to get it to a particular internal temperature. Um, but remember that it continues to cook as you go down. So once it's off the stove, it will cook for another anywhere between three and five degrees. So you never really want to overcook. It's okay if you pull it off just a little bit uh, before it goes all the way through because you'll see, I don't know if the camera is catching it, the side of the trout. You'll see how it will go from uh, its beautiful fresh color to opaque pretty quickly. So I've got now my beautiful peppers. My trout is looking really, really good. Yum, yum, yum. And I think for the tomatoes, you could dice them, but I think that they would get kind of um, watery if you go that way. So um, like the recipe suggests, I'm going to say it's a really good idea to um, just half your tomatoes, which is what I'm going to do. And for the dressing, I've got some lime juice with one garlic clove that is minced. So I've got it sitting in there with it already, ready to go. I'm going to just check the temperature because I don't want it to burn, but I do want it to cook nicely because uh, it's got a nice crust going on it. You can see my salsa is looking pretty good so far. And now I'm going to do a little half cut. I'm going to do a quarter cut and throw my tomatoes in. I'm going to say about a half a cup's worth. Uh, this recipe that I'm doing is actually really perfect for um, four, I'm going to say, uh, trout fillets, about 170 grams each. Um, but don't feel like you have to do um, trout. You could use any kind of uh, fish. Just go to your local fishmonger and say, hey, what's in season? I like to use trout, but I'm open to using other things as well. So what I'm going to do is just move my other ingredients because I can see the side of the uh, trout is looking quite beautiful. And so I would like to get it out of the pan. Oh, baby. Now, this is what I call a beautiful blackened rainbow trout. Yes, yes, hold your applause. It's just like smack dab. Yum, yum. Uh, don't be freaked out when you see this. This is just the spice, and it's just intensely flavored, hence the term blackened. It's not that it's burnt. It's got great flavor. And you can see along the side here just how beautifully cooked that trout is. So I'm just going to let it rest for a minute. And while it's resting, I'm going to continue to make my lovely, lovely um, salsa as the finishing topper for it. And it's really lovely, light flavors. You know, I find that um, the reason I chose these two recipes, and there are so many to choose from, if you go to uh, foodland.ca, um, you can see a number of their amazing uh, recipes that are seasonal. The, the reason I chose these two is because, you know, sometimes we do get excited when we're shopping for strawberries or certain ingredients that um, are so fresh and beautiful. 
and we're just wondering what we can do with them, you know. I, I, it's sad to say, but a lot of people toss their berries because they just don't get to them in time or they don't know how to properly store them and they don't want to eat them when they're kind of dried out or whatever. So in this case, I thought, you know, a strawberry salsa is fantastic because you've got that sweet. And for those of you going strawberries, you'd like mango salsa, right? I mean, there's so many, you could do a peach salsa. There's so many things that you can do. I like to stick with flavors from home personally, right? This is why I'm so proud to uh, work with Foodland Ontario because I'm a proud Ontarian and I love the fresh offerings that we have and I love creating things using all of the beautiful things that we have on hand. So here is our beautiful, beautiful strawberry salsa. Number one ingredient being strawberries. And now I'm going to add my dressing to it and when we come back, I'm gonna put it all together and do a beautiful Thai chicken salad featuring. See you soon. Welcome back to Cooking with Corey. I'm your host, Chef Corey Dern, and today I am making two absolutely fantastic Foodland Ontario recipes featuring strawberries. Yum, yum, yum. Uh, the first thing that we made in the first two segments were beautiful blackened um, rainbow trout with some gorgeous strawberry salsa, which I'm gonna finish off. Uh, and now we're gonna do an absolutely fantastic recipe, um, which is featuring these beautiful locally sourced fresh greens, um, strawberries, mini cucumbers, Ontario cucumbers, and I saw these and they were just so cute, I couldn't help myself. So instead of getting the ones that were like this, I got this. The recipe calls for two um, mini cukes, but I'm doing um, four little bitty baby cutes because they're just so cute. Um, so this salad is a really, really great salad because you're gonna utilize what we have on hand in our fridge. And that's what I like to do. I like to challenge myself to see what's in my refrigerator, absolutely shop for um, local ingredients because of the harmony and the flavor profile. They're so good together. Um, make my list, go to the store, look what's in my fridge and go, okay, I'm not gonna waste any food and make something delicious. And I know that a lot of people have roast chicken in their fridge which I know I do. Um, mixed greens, I've got all the ingredients for a salad, so let's kick it up a notch and make a Thai-inspired um, chicken salad featuring strawberries. So right here, I've got these beautiful, beautiful farm fresh greens. Um, Ontario is uh, really, really like great for lettuce right now, and it's one of those things that you wanna catch um, when it's uh, at a perfect state, because the bigger it grows, it gets more bitter. I don't know if you knew that, um, but it does. So these are lovely baby greens. And for the salad, I just wanna tear them. Why am I tearing them, you ask? Because a lot of other times I'll use a knife. Um, mainly because when you use a knife and you don't use all of your lettuce right away, uh, the knife will um, rust the edges, so to speak. And we don't wanna have any rusty looking lettuce. We want it to be absolutely lovely. And it's also a really great part of the salad um, because I've got all the different flavors of the different kinds of greens that, oh, that I have in the salad. So that is gonna add another layer of flavor, which you know I'm always saying this to you, you wanna build on the level of flavors. So I did a little bit of a pre-tear beforehand. So now I've got my lettuce, it's all ready to go. I'm gonna put that over here. And I'm gonna use a whole um, yellow pepper for this. And I'm gonna tell you the best way ever to cut a pepper is to do it this way. Start from the bottom, and that way while you're cutting it, you don't have any pith. You don't have to worry about any pith. You're taking the pith out of it. See what I did there? Made a little joke. <laughs> Sometimes I amuse myself. Hopefully I amused you with that joke. So I've got my strawberries, I've got my greens ready to go. I've got all the ingredients that I have for my dressing. Right here, I've got some roasted chicken, Ontario roasted chicken. I just, you know, set it and forget it. I put it on the rotisserie, uh, made it. This is about um, one chicken breast and a little bit of thigh meat uh, that I've shredded, ready to go. And so now it's about building on the flavor of the salad. So first things first, 
Really, it's up to you. You could put two cups of strawberries. You could make the bulk of it strawberries with just a little bit of green in between. That's up to you. You can slice your strawberries like I just did here for pretty sake. Or if, for, you know, I got to get this on the table, let's go. You can just quarter it. And if they're small, you can just half them. It's totally up to you. I'm going to do quarters because I think quarters are pretty. And again, I'm not going to hull them just for time and ease sake. Uh, these are washed and ready to go. Um, I love the idea of this salad because I love doing a lot of berry salads and strawberry happens to be my favorite because it's not overly sweet and it's not mushy. They tend to hold their shape really well and they pair well with so many things. Um, if you have like Ontario feta or goat cheese, that tastes so good with strawberries. If you're a person who's like, you know what, I'm really not big on um, Thai flavors, then, you know, just go with a simple dressing using a citrus or your favorite vinegar. It's totally up to you. But this one, I'm going to say just the smell and the flavor and the lovely sweetness of the strawberry with the um, kind of sweetness of the pepper. It's very, very nice. So I've got my strawberries in there, which is a star. And now I'm going to do a thin slice on these cucumbers. I'm just doing it on the bias because I just think it'll look a little pretty if I do it that way. Get those in there. And again, you are cooking for you at home. The recipe, I've said this many times already during this segment, is a guideline. It's a really good guideline, but don't feel like if you don't like something that you have to put it in if you're the one preparing the salad for yourself. You know what I mean? If you don't like, you know, cucumbers, then don't add the cucumbers. If you love cucumbers, then I say go to town. And as you can see with both of these recipes, strawberry and cucumber pairs really, really nicely together. I'm going to put one more little baby cuke in there. And I like the thin slice because I feel like it's going to pick up that dressing, which has got some really, really, really great flavors in it. So cucumber. And now we'll put in some lovely cherry tomatoes. Uh, again, another reason why I chose these two recipes is because we do sometimes buy ingredients and we have so many uh, of the ingredient left over for that one recipe. What do you do with all the ingredients that are left over? So in this case, I've got crossover ingredients, uh, beautiful um, Ontario tomatoes. They happen to be the cherry ones. For this recipe, I've decided to go with the pretty flavor, uh, colorful ones that we see right here. I'm going to use some green onion, spring onion, because nothing says yummy Thai like onion and spring onion. So I'm going to do a quick slice of this and put that in our beautiful salad. And if you like um, red onion, by all means, use red onion. Again, the first thing I did when I thought to myself I'd like to do these recipes was to go to the, my local grocer and to go to my farms to see what was running and what they had available. And this was the stuff that they had. So now I'm going to do my lovely yellow pepper. You can already see how it's coming together. Salads do not have to be boring at all. They can be absolutely gorgeous and full of flavor and color. You eat with your eyes first, right? So you can see I'm just doing this on the bias. And you can make it as full as you like or not as full as you like. And I've got my beautiful chicken and I'm going to put that right up on top. And for my dressing right here, I've got um, fish sauce. I've got olive oil. I've got soy sauce. I've got one uh, minced clove of garlic, but two tablespoons of ground ginger. I've got some sugar and some chili flakes, which I absolutely love. And I've got some white rice vinegar. I'm just mixing this all up. Yum, yum, yum. And now I'm going to dress my salad. If you want this recipe, I want you to go to rogerstv.com or foodlandontario.ca or even chefcory.com. Got this beautiful dressing, it's ready to go. And so are you. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I hope you'll tune in the next time. And remember, good things grow in Ontario. See you next time.